So this is the oil that I'm going to run in this engine. It uh, is from Amsoil. It's a synthetic. It's called Z-Rod. It's a 20W50. Um, it has zinc in it, which is good for flat tappet engines, and that's of course is what this is. So I will lubricate down the cylinders that I'm going to start putting pistons in. So right now I have cylinder one, which I just lubed it down, and cylinder two. They are on the same journal on the crankshaft, and I turn the crankshaft so that it is down as far as what it can go so that when I start installing these two pistons I do not mar up the crankshaft journal. Now you can put uh, rubber hose on the bottom of the connecting rod bolt which will as you go down through there, it'll protect from banging it up, or you can just be very careful. Um, I took the liberty of marking all of my pistons with a front of the block mark. Always just remember that if you look at the head, you will notice that the valves are much closer to the piston on the intake side. So when you go to install these, you need to have the valve reliefs on the piston. If your pistons only have two reliefs they need to be on the intake side. Once you get your ring orientation correct then you can put your ring compressor on the bottom of your piston is sticking out below the ring compressor. Pull it up tight. You can do this with the piston in, but you got to make sure that the ring compressor stays square and you got to make sure that you get the bottom oil ring in because if the bottom oil ring is not in the ring compressor and you start trying to push the piston in the cylinder, it's going to uh, do damage to your oil ring and the oil ring keepers. Okay, so now that I've got it in, I've got the orientation of the rings correct and I've got the orientation of the piston correct. Now I have a little more strength to be able to get a couple more turns on here, so I'll do that. And then, I will start to take the piston down slowly. Everything is squared up now, so I'm going to get another notch on there. You got to hold the ring compressor down tight against the deck of the block, otherwise, if the ring pops, it'll it'll pop out between the between the deck of the block and the ring compressor. tightening, you tighten it again. Don't pound too hard. You got to get the feel for this. And then once the piston is in the block, that's where you want to stop. Because if you go down any further, then you'll be worrying about hitting down below, which you don't want to do. As long as you have the crank at bottom dead center, and I'll show you what that looks like. As long as the crank is at bottom dead center and you take the piston until it's flush, you're going to be okay and you're not going to hit the rod bearing journal. So the crank is at bottom dead center and now that rod and piston is in. So you just want to take it until it's flush or just, just below flush. The next one we will do is cylinder number two. Then after we get those two in, then we will rotate the engine, the block I should say, upside down and we will put the bearings in 
the rod journals and push the pistons in the rest of the way and verify our clearance. At that point in time, once we verify our clearance and everything is good, we will bolt those back together so that both pistons 1 and 2 are both bolted in tight into the engine and the clearance is good. Then we will rotate the crankshaft so that we can do cylinders 3 and 4. So again, then at that crankshaft journal for cylinder 3 and 4 will be at bottom dead center so that again when we slide 3 and 4 piston in we don't hit the bearing journal. you tap it down so that it's even, that'll help you out. Because once one of those little rings, when I say that I mean the keeper rings for the oil ring, pops out of there like it just did, you're pretty much screwed at that point. Now we got the two pistons in, cylinder number one and cylinder number two. I will spin the block upside down. Wipe the oil off of the rod bearing journal. And then I can put the rod bearings in.